So you can think of the calcaneus as being shaped um, kind of like a rectangle or box shaped. Um, this is the view from medial. This is a superior view. This is the lateral view. Posterior view and inferior view. So we're going to go over each of those views, hopefully in order, um, and talk about the significant landmarks um, and the soft tissues associated with those landmarks. So let's start with the posterior view. On the posterior view, we've got this smooth region here and a roughened region here. So the um, calcaneal tendon or Achilles tendon, or also called the tendocalcaneus, attaches to this large calcaneal um, tuberosity. Um, that Achilles tendon includes the gastrocnemius and the soleus. The plantaris typically attaches separately to the calcaneal tuberosity, or it may blend with the Achilles tendon. Um, also, by the way, the soleus and the gastrocnemius is also referred to as the triceps surae, which means the three-headed muscle of the calf. This superior part is smooth, and that's where the um, bursa sits that's deep to the Achilles tendon. So the pre-Achilles um, bursa, or I think it's also called the sub-Achilles bursa, maybe, um, lies between the calcaneus and the Achilles tendon. If we look at it from a side view, we can see this region is for the bursa, and then the roughened region inferior to that is for the Achilles tendon attachment. Notice this posterior surface is kind of oval shaped. If we look at the superior surface, we can think of it as being divided into thirds. I think I'll do it like this. We can think of it being divided into thirds. This posterior third, this middle third, and then the anterior third. The posterior third is both convex in the medial lateral direction and concave in the anterior posterior direction. And this area supports Kager's fat pad. Kager's fat pad, or the pre-Achilles fat pad, um, uh, sits on the calcaneus here, and that fat pad is deep to the Achilles tendon. So Kager's, K-A-G-E-R, apostrophe S, that's an eponym, so it was named after someone. Um, so that's where Kager's fat pad sits, deep to the Achilles tendon. This middle part here is a large convex posterior facet for articulation with the talus for part of the subtalar joint. And then this anterior third is both articular and non-articular. So there's a smooth region here medially. So this is medial. There's a middle facet and an anterior fat facet. And quite frequently, those two facets end up being just one long facet, like it is in this real calcaneus. And sometimes there's separation between the two facets. So this is the articular portion of this anterior third. These middle and anterior facets are concave, and they articulate with the talus, um, again, to make up the subtalar joint. There's a roughened region here more laterally. That's for attachment of the extensor digitorum brevis, extensor hallucis brevis. Ligaments are in this roughened region, interosseous talocalcaneal ligament, the cervical ligament, um, the bifurcate ligament also attaches here to this anterior part. And this is sometimes called the anterior process of the calcaneus. An avulsion fracture of the anterior process of the calcaneus can occur 
from the bifurcate ligament, which supports the mid-tarsal or transverse tarsal joint because it goes from the calcaneus to the cuboid and the calcaneus to the navicular. That's the bifurcate ligament. This area here, let's see, I'm going to turn it like this so you can see. This concave area here is called, oopsie, went out of the picture here, is called the calcaneal sulcus. Calcaneal sulcus. And the interosseous talocalcaneal ligament attaches, there's multiple layers of that ligament, attaches in that sulcus. There's also fat and blood vessels and nerves in this region. And when you put the talus, i got to pick the right kind of right talus, when you put the talus and calcaneus together, you can see each of them have a sulcus. And when you articulate them together, the two sulci come together and they make the tarsal canal, the tarsal canal. You notice that the calcaneal sulcus starts at narrow and then widens as it goes laterally. And so does the Taylor uh, sulcus or sulcus tali. So the wide part that's lateral forms the sinus tarsi, this opening. So the sinus tarsi is this opening here between the talus and calcaneus. Let's look at the medial view. The medial view has a very prominent process. This is the sustentaculum tali. Sustentaculum tali. Let's look at it from a posterior view. You can see the sustentaculum tali projecting medially. The sustentaculum tali, if we look at its superior surface, has this concave middle facet on it for the subtalar joint. The sustentaculum tali also serves as a site of attachment of the plantar calcaneonavicular ligament. Plantar calcaneonavicular ligament. I'm going to get an articulated foot and show you. So here's the sustentaculum tali. And then you see the navicular distal to the head of the talus here. Excuse me, here, pardon me. The navicular distal to the head of the talus. So the plantar calcaneonavicular ligament attaches to the sustentaculum tali and then to the navicular, and it supports the head of the talus, which is really important for the medial longitudinal arch. Another ligament that attaches to the sustentaculum tali is the tibiocalcaneal ligament. The tibiocalcaneal ligament um, is part of the medial collateral ligament of the ankle joint or the deltoid ligament. And so that portion is the tibiocalcaneal ligament. If we look inferior to the sustentaculum tali, we can see there's a groove here. If we look at it from a posterior view, once it uh, focuses, there's the groove. That groove is for the tendon of the flexor hallucis longus muscle. So the flexor hallucis longus muscle lies in that groove. Okay, let's look at the lateral surface. So the lateral surface has a um, linear ridge, or it might look like a tubercle, might not be so linear. And that's called the peroneal or fibular trochlea. And that bony prominence lies between the fibularis longus and fibularis brevis tendons, or peroneus longus and peroneus brevis tendons. And the inferior fibular or peroneal retinaculum attaches to it. So the tendons are traveling on either side of that. There's also a feature on the lateral aspect for attachment of the calcaneofibular ligament, calcaneofibular ligament, which is part of the lateral collateral ligament of the ankle. Now, if we look at the inferior aspect of the calcaneus, 
we can see two processes or two tubercles that are part of the calcaneal tuberosity here, a large medial one and a smaller lateral one. Those are for muscle um, and fascial attachment. The medial process or medial tubercle um, is the site of attachment of the abductor hallucis, the main part of the plantar fascia or plantar aponeurosis, the abductor digiti minimi also um, attaches there, um, which also attaches to the lateral process. And then, did I mention the flexor digitorum brevis? I'm not sure. So let's review that. This is the medial tubercle. That's the site of attachment of the primary part of the plantar fascia or plantar aponeurosis. Deep to that is the flexor digitorum brevis. The abductor halysis also attaches to the medial tubercle. And then the abductor digiti minimi attaches to both the medial and the lateral tubercle. So um, quite a few muscles attaching to that medial tubercle. The quadratus plantae attaches a little more um, distal to the tubercles, the quadratus plantae, and I think that sometimes goes by another name, the flexor accessori accessorioris, um, but I've mostly seen quadratus plantae. The long plantar ligament also attaches to the plantar surface of the calcaneus, and this anterior tubercle is for the short plantar ligament. Both of those help stabilize the arches of the foot, primarily the longitudinal arches of the foot. The final part to look at is this very anterior view, and it has a facet that's both convex and concave for the cuboid to make the calcaneocuboid joint, which is part of the mid-tarsal or um, transverse tarsal joint. I didn't mention the talocalcaneal ligaments that attach to the calcaneus that support the subtalar joint. Um, there's a lateral talocalcaneal ligament that attaches to the lateral aspect. Um, I'm going to mention a, a couple of clinical correlations. Um, uh, and the one I'm going to mention first are coalitions, tarsal coalitions. That's when, um, when the bones are developing, that the tarsal bones are um, instead of forming separately, they form together. Coalition, that's what coalition means, together. And that coalition could either be a bony coalition, so that's a bony bridge between the two tarsal bones, or it can be a fibrous coalition or a cartilaginous coalition. So the two coalitions that involve the calcaneus are the talocalcaneal coalition or the calcaneonavicular coalition. And I'm sure if you look at some radiology websites, you'll see some images of those coalitions. So talocalcaneal, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's a coalition between the talus and the calcaneus. And then calcaneonavicular is a coalition between the calcaneus and the navicular.